Hi everyone, Alexander here tuning in from Gran Canaria in the Canary Islands for Indigo Light, sending you all my love, all my gratitude uh, for your presence, for all of your support throughout all of these months and all of these years. And of course, thank you for being present and watching this video. I hope it resonates. Uh, Today was not an easy video to make. It's been a topic that's been uh, in the air for a long time, as you obviously know. And it took me a while to, to figure out how to phrase things, how to address things, also with the support of my guidance. And to address things from the right angle, which is what I'm going to be trying to do today. Uh, do stay tuned till the end of the video because we have a lot of ground to cover. There's a lot of uh, announcements regarding uh, quite a lot of things. The website, courses, um, meditations coming up, Reiki sessions and so on. Uh, we've had quite nice Reiki um, group healing sessions lately, and I'm going to be doing some more. So if you want to take part in that, do stay tuned until the end of the video. Thank you. For today, um, the question that was asked, it's an email, uh, email uh, topic I've been getting a lot lately. Um, and also messages on Instagram, Facebook, whatnot. Is there going to be a World War III? Are we approaching a time of a strife of that magnitude? Um, and it's a question I've thought about for, for a while, you know, had dreams and premonitions for a couple of years now that uh, the pandemic was a set of three. It was the first of, two, of three uh, steps in of trials and tribulations, so to speak, as we usher in a new stage in our evolution. So it's really important for me to address this from the get-go. And it's not going to be a yes or no answer. Okay, obviously we're going into a state of uh, more strife, more adversity, more difficulty. I think you understand that and you know that. So I want to address things properly. I've written some things down and I'll be going through them as, as, uh, as, go, as I go along this video. But it's not going to be so simple as to say yes or no. Okay, so obviously there is a topic here. There are a few things that I want to elaborate on and I want to do so in the proper way. And, and I want to begin by elaborating that this is not to be an ominous video. This is not to scare people, to frighten people in any way, shape or form. And that's what I want to really expand on today is the topic of duality. Okay. It is my understanding that at this time in 2024 until 2044, with an emphasis on 2024, 2025, 2026, we are undergoing what is called the global reset. Okay. We are still living in the age of duality. What does this mean? We have a certain karma that we've accrued over many tens of thousands of years and prior civilizations on this planet and beyond. We have not really dealt with it. The whole ascension uh, process, the whole uh, ascension to the fifth dimension where we become manifestors and not victims asks us to relinquish the karmic duties and the karmic balance that we had in the past. Karma is a matter of the fourth dimension. So we have to transcend that. And since the month of October approximately, we are undergoing what we'll call a timeline split. A timeline split is simple to say, simple enough to say that those that have decided to settle in the fifth dimensional awareness will do so and are doing so and have done so depending on your, your level or the level of devotion, okay, not your level as a human being. And others have decided to stay in the three-dimensional paradigm. Both of these experiences will coexist, but they will be part of different timelines. So they run parallel to each other. There is an overlap, like a Venn diagram. But beyond that, you know, you will be perhaps part of those that choose to see reality devoid of duality and a reality that is multi-leveled and multifaceted, in which you exist between the physical and the etheric simultaneously, whilst others decide to stay within physicality, where they measure their, their worth in terms of monetary gains, beauty, status, power, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, whilst you understand that you are soul, and this is a projection, and you are the soul watching the mind, watching the physical vessel. It's a meme I put on, the, on the Instagram a couple of days ago with a family guy who was funny. Check it out. Um, 
that we're having this experience, this kind of transcendental experience that spans different dimensions. Okay. So in that respect, we are resetting our karma. That is the idea of all of this. Duality means that you can decide whether you want to be bound by the topics of light and dark. In reality, there is no light and there is no dark. There is only the moment. If you go up to the realms of the Creator and you were to ask it and to try to experience things at that level, you understand that there is no such thing. The duality is an invention of humanity and the lower kind of levels of our, not of our manifestation, but of our being, in order to understand. Because in, in, in the end, all of this um, reality that we live in, the earth and beyond, is only a school in order to learn some of the things that are not necessarily possible to learn in the higher realms where we are not physical. When you talk about angels and archangels and all of these beings, they don't necessarily experience love. They experience a platonic universal love, but they cannot experience the emotions that we do, that are bound to hormones in our bodies and pheromones and so on. They cannot eat. They cannot engage in sexual activities and none of these things. So this earth was created beyond its, you know, its functionality, which we live with, in order to be a school of the highest learning for all the souls that span the multiverse. And I want that to sink in for a sec. Okay. And that planet with time became bound by karma because we came down and we had these emotions and we engaged in this. I'm not going to talk about what are the powers that may be that are influencing this because we are focusing on the individual and engaging in your power today. When we go and talk about the fifth dimension and the ascension and everything, we're talking about dissolving all of this layer and regaining yourself and owning yourself as an individual, as a soul. And that means that you have to relinquish the idea of duality. So duality means different things. Duality means understanding that the light and the dark and all of this, and you, you can go on spiritual circles and see many people writing about the war between the light and the dark and, and so on and so forth. But that is still engaging in the duality that is. And many people find it necessary to continue this imaginary battle until we reach a point of a sort of homeostasis and then we can start to work on ourselves. So the duality means to understand that there is no darkness and there is no light. These are two facets in order to learn from this experience, this physical experience that we're in. And yes, when we talk about war and we talk about strife, it has a very ugly side which is visible. And there's a lot of pain and all of that. But even in that respect, even in this traumatic way which we manifest things, which is absolutely undeniable, as humans we still fear death tremendously. And death is nothing but a transition from one realm to the other. And that's one thing it's important to remember. So if we kind of look just at the, and I'm not going to dwell on that, but if we look just at the component of fear of death coming into this world being knowing that we're going to go, being afraid of that moment, not being in acceptance and seeing it as something scary, distant, ominous, frightful, dark, we immediately engage in a duality. If we can relinquish all of that, then immediately it's not so scary. And you can really zoom out and understand that humans do what they do and have been doing so for many, many tens of thousands of years. None of this is new. Okay, and the duality and its secondary aspect means not engaging in perspectives, but being detached, which means that everything we're going to be discussing today, and there is more, so stay tuned, is about the duality of I know better than you. My belief system is superior to yours. Therefore, I need to convert you, I need to convince you, and if I cannot, I will use force. And that can be religious, it can be political, it can be monetary, it can be about control, power, and dominance, and all of that stuff. Okay, again, none of it is real. Because you can accrue as much power as you want, but when you're going to die and move on to the, the etheric realm, you're not taking any of that with you. And you'll go and start over again and come be back here within X amount of time. So it was all an illusion. And you could not see beyond the duality of being poor versus being rich. Being tall, being short, being uh, this race versus this race, being this religion versus this race. That's the duality, which is again a complete illusion. 
So um, this is about releasing the attitude of I know better than you. And this is sad to say, but this is a necessary cycle. Because whether you like it or not, and if not for the conflicts that are happening now in the Middle East and in the Ukraine and in Azerbaijan and Armenia very soon and in, in Yemen and have been going on forever and ever and ever and ever, they just switch locations, we are still engaging in these actions and there needs to be a great reset, which is what this whole is about. We have to reset. And sometimes resetting means bringing all of the ugliness to the surface, dealing with it, and unfortunately, on, as a collective choice, it takes the face of war and strife and adversity and death. And I'm really not happy saying this, but it is necessary to be said. In order for people to get exasperated and said, you know, I've had enough. There must be another solution. Perhaps we need to look about cooperating with each other. Okay. I'm just looking over my notes because this is not something I want to do on the go. Okay. Um, so we want to be able to reach a place where we are ready to let go of that duality and start a new uh, phase. And all of the old must go. The other aspect of that is that we make a mistake as a society because we believe our society is progressing. If you go from the Middle Ages until today in terms of technology and expansion and diplomacy, we have evolved. Okay, in that respect. So we say, great, there is a, a human expectation that we're going to keep on evolving because we're going to become a futuristic society, have robots, AI, and all this stuff. That is not necessarily true. We are now in a phase of decay. And this is not to be ominous or negative or anything like that, but the decay is necessary. The decay acts as a checks and balances for society every so often that society is bigger than it can manage and there's too much ego. And there is a stage of decay where it kind of collapses on its own in order for values to be reassessed. The same happened with every empire we've ever had. Civilizations collapse, reassess, and rebuild themselves. It's not going to be at the same level, of course, but the strife, I believe, at this point is inevitable to expand beyond where it is. And I'll elaborate on that in a second. Okay. And to address everything that hasn't been dealt with. Now... And this is, again, about checks and balances. You know, we cannot, we have, I guess, better technology than we've ever had, but we have also more pollution than we've ever had in the last 50 years. Things are out of control. We are more divided. There is civil strife in many, many different places. There is the rise of uh, right-wing ideology versus immigration versus religion in, in Europe, for example. Uh, terrorism is going to be on the rise as well during this period. And that takes me to the next topic, which is the manifestation of this uh, experience. So, again, we're trying to transcend all of this duality, all of this conflict. We cannot, we will not be allowed by the powers that be, the, ben the benevolent powers that be, our um, cousins from outer space, the creator, the archangels, whatever powers, make sure that we are on the right path. And of course, with our decisions and our souls, we cannot continue the way we are going. Even if we have AI and robots and flying cars and all that stuff, that's very cute, but it's superficial. The value system is collapsing on itself. We have reached a point of also culturally, uh, artistically, musically, repetition. We don't know what to come up with anymore. So there has to be a place where we collapse and we reassess. And that is necessary, and it's happened many times before if you look at history. The manifestation... Um, we have already strife between Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia. Armenia and Azerbaijan is something that's brewing. We have Yemen with the Houthis and we have the factions of... I'm not going to go into the politics because this is not my area of interest. Again, duality. But it, there's a lot of you know, wars behind the, the, behind the shadows being fought between East and West, basically. And everything you see, whether you like to accept it or not, is by proxy. Like it's always been. Okay, a lot of the more the, the, the strife that is more gruesome that we focus on is by proxy of another power trying to and so on and so forth. And again we go back to duality. Because one power needs to have more power over another because of male ego, uh, toxic masculinity energies, which are on the rise as well as feminine energies come in, 
The male energy doesn't know what to do, so it resorts to its more base instincts in many, many ways. The individual, the government, the companies, the settings. And um, from my understanding, that's going to keep on expanding. Now, I want to I bring another um, energy into this for the moment. I've been working with, um, with groups lately. We get together. I, I publicized it on the, I published it and I shared it on uh, the social media channels. And we sent positive energy and intention and Reiki and Theta healing, whatever modality you want to use, towards certain places in the world. The two chakras that we've been working on are, um, the Earth has chakras. I made a video on it. Uh, I believe it was the last video I made, so check that out. Um, the chakra in Jerusalem, which is above the Temple Mount and the Wailing Wall. Okay, and the chakra that is in Tibet above Mount Kailash. These are etheric chakras, they float above. Both of these have been closed for a long time. The one in Jerusalem specifically for many, many, many hundreds of years. And that's why we have so many wars in the Middle East. Within the proximity, you know, Lebanon, Syria, uh, Libya, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into that as well, but the strife just seems to never end. And as long as that chakra remains closed because of the powers that be and because of the duality and the choices we make, pardon me, um, things will keep on occurring in the way that they are. When chakras are closed, they also give way to the earth rattling because it is trying to... When you see an animal being stressed, for example, uh, they shake. They shake it off. Uh, humans also have this, I think it's a trauma response, whatever. There's this kind of modality where you can shake things off and trauma is released from the body. Earthquakes, tremors, the earth does exactly the same thing in the same way. Okay, so be open to that as well. Um, and I'm getting to the good stuff in a couple of minutes. So we have a continuing of everything we've seen so far, an expansion. What's going on in the Middle East will probably expand beyond that. Okay, uh, more countries will get involved. We're looking at possible rise of terrorism in Europe as um, there are right-wing factions that clash with waves of immigration and ideologies. Again, duality, duality. Um, and civil strife. Civil strife in Europe, civil strife in the United States. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And in other places. Masculine versus feminine, old ideology versus new ideology, uh, you know, liberation versus conservation. Some people want to keep things the way they are. And again, we're engaging in duality. I'm not saying that one side is better than another because there's always a way to deal with things. And I don't believe that either side is correct. I don't like to use that word, but correct at this time. So again, when are we going to learn as a collective about duality? And about the fact that things are not necessarily real. If you zoom out, we're all just kind of souls floating here. Now, that was the manifestation part. Um, and this will go on into 2025 and 2026. So next year is an escalation, the way I understand it to be. It's not pretty. It's decay. It's difficult to accept and so on. But there is a reason. And that's the next thing I want to cover. Before I do that, um, I, I want to ask you to keep uh, up to date with what's going on with the YouTube and the Instagram and the Facebook. I'm going to be organizing a couple of those meditations. There is uh, one where we send energies to these chakras and we work uh, with a planet. That means that anybody that has any kind of spiritual inclination can join. doesn't have to be anything specific. But if you're a Reiki teacher, if you're a Reiki practitioner, if you're a theta healing, any kind of modality or just your intention, you're welcome to join. Second thing is I'm going to be organizing another group Reiki healing session, which is essentially a session where you just show up and receive Reiki. Uh, last time we did so, quite a few people showed up. Very nice experience. We shared what was it before, what was it like before, what was it like after. So that's been interesting. Okay. If you're interested in either of those, I'm going to invite you to, to send me an email at indigolight2222 at gmail.com. You can send me a message to Facebook, Instagram as well. I'm going to leave all of that in the description. And I've been also revamping a bit the website, indigolightlove.com. There's a lot of courses that you can, you know, you just, they are sent to you. You download um, on many, many, many different topics. I strongly invite you to check them out. They can be very helpful. They're easy to access. They're extremely affordable as well. 
you do the studying on your own and for the period of time we're going into I believe they are of great great use and I don't mean that in a biased way I mean that in an honest manner so check them out indigolightlove.com I'll include that in the description of the video as well now um, regarding the period we're going into now I'll speak for a few more minutes and then not make this too long because this is a lot of material this is the time that you've all been preparing for there's been a lot of confusion for many people over the last few years about where are they headed, where, where is the, the entire kind of world situation headed. And I've received a lot of messages over the last three years, especially since, uh, since we began entering the pandemic until it's, uh, it's, it's, it ended, um, talking about the fact that things, quote unquote, did not pan out the way people thought. And I understand that and I empathize with it. When I started this journey in 2010, things were described and painted in a way that isn't today. We are entering a time of, again, I'll use the word decay, necessary decay. And this is not a bad thing, it is a necessary thing. So many of you, perhaps all of you, have you been only preparing and training up to this point. This is the time when you were asked to shine. When you're asked to take all of your lessons, transmute, and help the people that will not be able to understand what the spirit of time is about. They'll be left to their own uh, habits, and they will be kind of reiterating what they usually do, and it will be very, very challenging for them to navigate, and they will need your help. It can be people close to you, it can be people online, it doesn't matter. But just to understand that, again, this is from my understanding, all of these years have been merely a preparation for the transition especially into 2024. Remember, we've just entered this year. It has a long way to go, and then the year after that as well. These are two very, very potent years in terms of shifting. Okay, and as we know, sometimes the ugly truth must come to the surface in order to be revealed, dealt with, accepted, and as a process. There is denial, acceptance, and so on. You know these things. So the truth is all there is, and we, it's time that we deal with it. We're not being necessarily very honest with ourselves. Um, so, for all of you to understand that this is an intimidating period of time, perhaps, perhaps it is scary, and it is not meant to be ominous, but necessary. And this is not a time for you to coil on yourself, to recoil into yourself, but to shine. That's what you're being asked to do. So I ask you, I implore you, as a light worker to light worker, not to approach this with fear. As ominous as things be seem, as strange as they may become tomorrow, there are many things that are being, you know, developing if you follow what's going on in the world, or if you don't, which is healthier. But to keep in mind two things, you are now on your own timeline. So they're asking you not to be reactive, but to be proactive, to create, to create your reality. Do not sit and wait for X, Y, Z to happen. What can you do today to be better? to be more yourself, to be more wholesome, and to help out in all of this paradigm. And not to sit again in fear. Fear is duality. None of this is real. Everything is happening on multiple levels. And you are, as a manifester, the one that chooses how you experience it. If I sit in my house in Spain here on this island, and I turn every you know, piece of electronics off, I am, quote-unquote, for the sake of the argument, cut off. And my reality is different than the reality that happens when I go out and I look at what other people are doing and what is going on in the international scene. And then be, that begets the question, what is real and what is not? Is this thing, if a tree falls in the, in the forest, does it make a sound? If nobody hears it, something along those lines. It's that same kind of, 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 uh, of thought. What is real to you, what is not? Are you reactionary or proactive? These are important things. And are you shining in your truest light or just waiting for X, Y, Z to happen in order to be ready to react and so on? So this is uh, the question of the day. And the timeline split has occurred. And you're being asked to shine. You're being asked to embody that, that role for yourself and for others. And you may be tired because it's been years and years and years, and you've put in the work, and, and I get this a lot, and I understand it. Um, it's, it was a lot more tiring than we thought. 
when I started again this process many years ago, I had no freaking idea that it would be this difficult to get to this point in terms of purging. And I had no idea that the world would look like it does today because I didn't know. Okay, um, and you can never know. You can never prepare, you can never know. That's why we have to be careful with the idea of elaborate predictions on dates and that and the other. Um, we are in a time of creation. We create timelines all the time. And we can only understand them as they unfold. So again, this is about being proactive and about transcending duality. And I mean that in the deepest sense. Okay. Um, so my last word of advice as we close this video is to focus not on what is happening around you and why and what and when and who, but to why you have chosen to be here now. Why are you here now? And to understand that you're also not only here for yourself. You have a purpose. We did not necessarily, as souls, come to the, believe it or not, the, the most negative density planet in all of the multiverse. That's what Earth is. It's a school in transmuting emotion and negativity into creativity and love and so on. And we do that very well, but not often enough. So why have you chosen to come to this place, to the now, and what are you going to do about that, about that mission? That's what I wanted to share with you today. It's a lot of material. I hope you digest it well. If you have any questions, comments in the section, uh, in the comment section, and I'll add all the links for the courses, for the meditations and whatever. And if you want to be part of any of these events, please do send me an email so I can add you to the list and send you an invite when that dates are ready. They're coming up very, very soon. I send you my deepest love, my gratitude, and thank you for being awesome, for being brave, and for being lightworkers. Thank you.